With the release of patch 1.1, Harbinger's of Ruin, Aberth will only be able to be challenged in the online cycle. That means you must make a new character in the online in order to participate in this new content. Make sure you're aware of that before you begin playing. Welcome back to some last epoch, everybody. This information is involving cycle two or the second season. This will be titled Harbinger of Ruin and very excited for this. Hopefully you are as well. This video will cover all of the nine topics featured in the table of contents and I'll leave a link to this information where you can find it or view it at your own discretion and also a link for the official trailer. So let's go ahead and jump right in. First up, an evade is being added to the game and they're very clear to tell you that this is not a dodge roll. First, there's already a dodge statistic which a lot of the classes may use in order to just bolster your own defenses. So evade is gonna be separate than that. This is a button that you'll hit and just slightly slide to a different position and you can still be hit by effects while using this so you're not completely invulnerable or having iframes as it's referred to. Here's a look at the tooltip, and one thing that caught my eye here is you actually gain cooldown recovery per character level, so you're actually able to evade more frequently the higher level your character is. And it does have a scaling tag of movement, so you may potentially be able to boost this. In fact, they can offer some unique items that alter and even boost this effect as well. Here's a better look at a couple of the items that are just going to affect this new evade ability. You can gain additional evade charges, increase cooldown recovery, and you can even change the evade into being a summon crab ability. So it looks like not only at this point, but in the future, there may be more options for evade as well. There's also some really good developer notes here, and I'm really appreciative of this. It gives you kind of some insight into what they're thinking and some of the plans they may have for the future as well. What they talk about in part of this is introducing the evade mechanic may open up some build opportunities. Most builds currently feel forced to include a traversal skill, and I agree. I would say that at the moment, I always use a traversal skill in all of the builds that I make. There's also a general note that evade will not need to be placed on the slot or the loadout bar, meaning that you can just use a different key binding, so you aren't losing a skill by taking advantage of the evade. Here's a look at the new Nemesis encounter that's going to randomly come around as you go through Harbinger's Ruin, and what's interesting here is you'll go up to the Nemesis, and you're actually going to have some options. Let's take a look at these options right now. First thing you can do is banish the Nemesis. It's just going to put the encounter to rest and the items that it offers. The second option is to challenge the nemesis. By selecting it, you're essentially going to rise the nemesis from its grave and it's going to return to fight. If you're able to successfully defeat the nemesis, you can receive all the items that were displayed in the earlier UI. And this is a look at the UI right here, which you're seeing on the screen. It's showing you those items and you even have the ability to take a look at those items prior to rising or challenging the nemesis. The final option is to empower the nemesis and you can actually awaken it and attack you. However, when you defeat it, it will run away instead of dropping the items. And these items will actually have increased power the next time you encounter the nemesis. So you need to make one of these three choices every time you randomly encounter them. The nemesis can also be found with a special reward type, the egg of the forgotten. And here's a take a look at the tooltip here. It says it can be replaced with a unique item that lacks both legendary potential and weaver's will. And at first you might think that's not that great. But as you continue to read, you realize this is actually really nice. For the down, you can see that the item is empowered through the Nemesis system, and it can become a legendary by gaining random affixes or instead even gaining legendary potential. And that is provided that you replace the egg with your own unique item. So you can actually take an item of your choice and potentially add legendary potential to it. This is extremely nice. Now we jump into the new faction, Harbingers and Forgotten Knight. Now this faction can be taken in addition to Circle of Fortune or the Merchant Guild, so you aren't exchanging it for one of those that you previously used. And this system is pretty straightforward. The Harbingers are new bosses that can be found deep within the Monolith of Fate or the Endgame system. And as you continue to progress in the corruption or increase the difficulty, you'll find new challenges from these Harbingers as well. So this is kind of an evolving system. There's two forms, Agile and Brute. They're going to have different combat styles, and they also gain different abilities based on the timeline's boss. And that's pretty exciting. You also need to defeat them in each of the 10 timelines. So you're going to be moving from timeline to timeline, as opposed to just grinding a single timeline for maximum corruption. This is a very welcome change from the previous system we saw in the first cycle. The first 10 of these Harbingers you defeat are guaranteed to provide an eye. Once you've defeated all of the different Harbingers, you'll be able to make your way beyond the Shattered Road. At that point, you can place an eye on the altar and you'll be pulled into the Harbinger's domain. The domain is essentially an arena where you'll face off against the leader, which again will have new abilities to further crush you and your hopes. Upon defeating the first one, you'll be able to begin your journey with the Forgotten Knight's faction. And again, that faction is separate from the previous factions we saw in Cycle 1. Now, the reason I mention or repeat that is because the tab looks extremely similar to what we have for the current factions within the game but you'll be able to get multiple rewards from multiple factions and of course these will get better as your rank increases the most interesting of these rewards is a chance to drop a new crafting material the glyph of envy 
the Glyph of Envy is going to destabilize an item, unpredictably changing all but the affix that you actually put it on. And in return for that, it's going to add some monolith progression to whichever timeline you're currently in. So you're going to be able to greatly speed through regular monoliths and even getting back to empowered monoliths quicker. This was a really common area of feedback for a lot of players at how slow it was to progress through monoliths on subsequent characters. So this is a very welcome change by pretty much everybody that I've heard from. There's also some information on boss defenses. Now this was already in the game previously. However, it's being changed to a system that grants bosses bursts of ward. This is really just a means allowing the boss to defend itself rather than being bursted before it uses any of its abilities. This was already in the game. So this isn't necessarily new. It's just a new way of representing it and getting the information across to the players so you know what's going on. Essentially, you'll still be able to kill the boss the same way you used to. High DPS builds are still gonna kill the boss quicker as opposed to low DPS builds. The boss will just be allowed to use some abilities before you one-shot it. Arbinger's Needle is a new idol being added to the game. It's gonna break if you have this equipped when you kill a timeline boss above 90 corruption, granting an additional three gaze of Orbos. So just a manner of accelerating the growth on the corruption that you have for that timeline. There are many unique items being added to the game. These four are just examples, so a lot more than this, but let's go ahead and take a look at one. Let's take a look at Avarith's Command. This is a scepter. You're gonna get melee damage and spell damage. This could add to a lot of interesting combinations. Void Cleave is now instant and is no longer a movement skill. Pretty interesting change to the ability. Also no longer has a weapon requirement. That of course, because this is a scepter and you wouldn't be able to use it otherwise. But regardless, that means you could put another weapon in your offhand and even get a different combination or unique build from previous cycle. Ravaging Ores created by Void Cleave last an additional eight seconds and have 40% void penetration. You also get 13% void penetration on top of that. 268% increased damage over time and increased area for area skills. Overall, I think this is actually a really good weapon and definitely has some potential for making a new build. Lastly, as the post close out, they mentioned that there's actually gonna be more upcoming posts with other changes, more specifically quality of life changes coming in just a couple of weeks. Very excited for that as well. Feel free to leave your comments and even feedback with the upcoming cycle. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch and have a great day.